Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spectra Ultra. Today, we're going, going to be talking about our double click to tilt functionality, our electron dose control module, and the Ultra X EDS detector. I have a fib lamella inserted with a silicon substrate that has these beautiful layers grown on top of it of um, strontium titanate, lanthanum manganite, and barium titanate. And I can see my layers already, but I can also see I'm not quite on the zone axis. So, to get on the zone axis, I'm simply going to double left click where I think the zone axis is. And the stage is going to tilt the alpha and beta. And then I'll go to a lower mag to find my area of interest again because I did tilt in the beta. And I'll also need to adjust my Z height a little bit. And I can use my piezo stage moves if I want to be a little more delicate. And I can see that I ended up right on the zone axis. And just move around my stage a little. The sample's a bit bent, so the zone axis will change um, pretty quickly, but that makes the double tilt or double click to tilt even more useful. And right now, I'm actually at a pretty high current. I'm at 150 picoamps. I want to start with imaging, or I'm at 200 picoamps. I want to start with imaging, so I'll go back to a 50 picoamp beam current. And I can see my nice lattice here. Just use the piezo stage to get to an unbroken area. and touch up the focus. I want to go in and touch up my condenser stigmator a tiny bit as well. And now that I have my atoms nice and sharp, I'll decrease my field of view to whatever I desire, um, let's say around 21 nanometers like we have here, touch up my scan rotation, and I'll acquire a series of images at 1K by 1K and 1 microsecond dwell. I'm currently using about 80 kilo electrons per angstrom squared, and I can see my dose rate listed here with my 50 picoamp beam. Um, and I can see my total dose listed here. So I'll go ahead and acquire 10 frames. And as I'm acquiring, I can begin the drift corrected frame integration optimized for periodic images. And what this does is it applies a drift correction to each of these frames. And I can see I have a much better signal to noise ratio on the right hand summed image than on the left hand unsummed image. I can also scroll through and see my dose change. So if I wanted to use a certain dose, I could sum fewer images or more images. And say I like this image, but I notice my sample's damaging, I might want to decrease the dose. So I could go to the total dose, set it to 34 kilo electrons per angstrom squared to have it, and this will change the gun lens setting and the corresponding dose and dose rate. And I just touch up the focus and acquire my series again. I can begin my drift corrected frame integration, optimize for periodic images. And this is where the DCFI is really helpful because on the left, I actually have a fairly noisy image, but on the right with the drift corrected frame integration, my signal to noise ratio is much, much better. Now, I've taken the images I want at lower dose, um, and now I want to switch to an EDS condition. So I can also change my dose, I can change it from the imaging tab, or I can go into optics and just change my beam current. So let's say we want to do 200 picoamps to do um, EDS, 
I can see my beam is 200 picograms now. My dose and dose rate have gone up accordingly. And I'll go ahead and touch up my focus and condenser stig. Let my HADA readjust the gain and con uh, offset. And my atoms still look nice and lovely, even at this high beam current, because of the cold FEG, um, which maintains our great spatial resolution at high currents. And I'm going to use a 15 nanometer field of view. And now I'm going to put in the Ultra X. You can see how quickly the Ultra X inserts. And what's inserted, we'll just check our focus and stig once again which don't go too far off with the insertion of the Ultra X. Right back on track. And I like this area, so I'm going to go ahead and just move my beam to a park position outside the frame. Check my spectrum image settings. So I'm going to use 20 microsecond dwell, drift con compensation optimized for periodic images, and I can see what my dose per frame will be. As I acquire each frame, I will see the dose increase, um, and that will be summed through all the frames. Now my dose has gone up again, and I can take a look at my EDS map as I acquire. So I'll put down a spectrum um, image box, and I can send my elements to the spectrum image. Get rid of any spurious ones. We don't need to look at copper. That's from the holder. And we can go ahead and set all of our custom colors as we wish them to be. And let's grab our barium as well. And go to the deconvoluted mode with the net option. And apply a um, radial wiener post filter to help see the atoms a bit better as we acquire. And with those settings, I can really see the lanthanum atoms um, starting to pop out here. I can adjust my gamma to make them more visible as well as my strontium coming through, and even my barium, which I have a much thinner layer of. Um, I can also see the manganese sitting opposite the lanthanum, so I've got a really nice manganese lanthanum matrix coming up, as well as my titanium, with the titanium and orange sitting opposite the strontium, as well as sitting opposite the barium. And we've only been acquiring for two minutes, and we're already seeing all of our atoms. I'll let it acquire for a few more minutes. Um, in the meantime, we can also put down a line profile, make the integration width 500 pixels, essentially the entire width of our um, frame. And in the line profile, we can see um, all of our elements starting to show up really well. I can see the barium sitting opposite the titanium, which is an orange, and then the titanium continuing through to sit with the strontium as well, and then my um, lanthanum in blue and my manganese in pink, alternating through that thick layer. And we've been acquiring for just about five minutes. We'll take one more frame after this one. And once the acquisition is complete in VLOX and the file is saved, we can do the finishing touches on our map.
One of them is to apply a pre-filter, which is one of the simple options we have to improve quantification. Another would be to use a spectrum profile instead of the intensity profile we use today. This is important to get good quantification, and you can see the video about using a spectrum profile in our YouTube channel. The pre-filter has been applied, and this will really make all of our atoms um, come through super beautifully in this really nice lamella sample here um, with all these distinct layers that our ultra access captured so nicely.